How to plan a partial lunar eclipse step by step. Hello, Photopiller, Rafael the Bar here. In this video, you'll learn how to photograph the coming November 19th, 2021 partial lunar eclipse or any other partial lunar eclipse you wish to photograph in the future. So, get ready to learn how to photograph all the faces of the eclipse and also how to photograph the eclipse along with a powerful landscape or an interesting subject you like. Are you ready? Because as always, everything begins with a plan. As you know, the partial lunar eclipse won't be visible everywhere. It will be visible only in certain places on Earth. So the first thing you need to do is to use photo pills to figure out where on Earth the eclipse will be visible and also at what time the phases of the eclipse will occur. With all this information, you will be able to plan your eclipse shot, you will be able to find your shooting spot, this is the red pin position, and where the eclipse will occur the direction and the time, so you'll have everything under control, so you can go and photograph it. You see here is my plan for the coming partial lunar eclipse, happening on November 19, 2021. If you wish to learn how to plan your lunar eclipse shot, you wish to see me planning this shot for the coming uh, partial lunar eclipse, watch this video. Whether your goal is to photograph only the faces of the eclipse with no foreground, or to photograph the eclipse aligned with an interesting subject, you'll need the same equipment you need when you're photographing the moon. You'll need your tripod and hat, your camera, of course, and a telephoto lens. 300mm, 400mm, 500mm or more. The longer, the better. Here, if you have a crop sensor camera, you'll benefit for the multiplying effect on the focal length. And if you have a teleconverter, it's also a good idea to use it to multiply the focal length you have available to get a much longer focal length. Also, you want to create a composite image like this one by Jose Antonio Arvaz, then you'll need a second camera and a wide-angle lens to capture the landscape and the path of the eclipse. And finally, use an external shutter release or an interpolometer. The less you touch the camera, the better. Avoid vibrations at all costs, because vibrations produce blurry images. On the eclipse date, arrive at the planned shooting spot, this is the red pin position, one hour or so before the eclipse begins. Set up everything and make sure that everything is stable. Then use the photopills on meter reality view to visualize the path and the position of the eclipse in the sky and to double check that you are at the right shooting spot. Now, set the focal length you wish to use to get the frame you want, for example, 500mm. If your goal is to photograph only the faces of the eclipse with no foreground, then meet a light on the surface of the moon before the eclipse begins. Set the aperture to f8 to get a nice depth of field, but always be ready to open the diaphragm to f5.6 or more to keep the shutter speed under one second, because you want to avoid the motion blur on the moon due to the rotation of Earth. Now set the ISO to 100, but again, be ready to push it up to 400, for example, or even more, 800, to keep the shutter speed under one second. Next step is to set the shutter speed that gives you the right exposure on the moon. A good idea, a good starting point when you're photographing a partial lunar eclipse is to set a base shutter speed of 1 divided 125 seconds. And bracket, bracket, bracket your exposure to make sure that you're getting at least one photo correctly exposed. Usually a one-stop bracketing of three photos will be enough. Now make focus on the moon, but if you're photographing the eclipse aligned with an interesting subject, make focus on your subject. Then take a test shot and make sure that the moon or both the moon and your subject are in focus. By the way, there is a way to make sure that your subject and the moon or the eclipse are both in focus in the photo. Actually, you need to use the depth of field tool in the Photopills Planner and I explain how to use it in this video. Watch it. Okay, and last but not least, check that the exposure is right. Check that you're capturing detail on the moon, in the highlights, and also in the shadows. And of course, if something looks wrong, make the necessary adjustments on the focusing or on the exposure. Now, you wish to learn more on how to photograph a lunar eclipse, you wish to nail your eclipse shots, I recommend you to download our super detailed lunar eclipse photography guide. I'm gonna leave a link in the description of this video and in the first comment below. And if you wish to learn more on how to photograph the moon, we have a lot of videos on how to photograph the moon and how to plan the moon, and you have them here. Watch our free moon photography course. You have it here. Watch it. 
And if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday in another video. And remember that you have the power to imagine, plan, and shoot legendary photos. Bye.